We all lead busy lives, but if we could just stop everything and take a bird's eye view, a little higher, there, now we can see the multitudes. We are fueled by a shared vision to bring the name of Christ to those who have yet to hear. So we move forward to extreme places, corners of the world that have no access to the gospel. We train missionaries, send them out together, and pray that God's grace be known. We help the hurting, comfort the dying, give hope to the displaced, and have seen thousands come to faith in Christ. We are able to do so much more together than if we were chasing this vision alone. This is our common effort, together. Good evening and welcome to our live stream season of prayer for International Missions and the Lottie Moon Christmas Offering. We're glad that you've joined us to be able to seek the Lord tonight for this most important endeavor that we have as a church. You know, before Jesus ascended to heaven, he gave us what has been called the Great Commission. And that commission is found in Matthew 28, verses 19 and 20. And I want to read it tonight to remind us of why we're gathered to pray and why we give to international missions. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. There, Jesus gave the church its marching orders. That's what we're to be about, making disciples of all nations. We start with that right here at home, but it continues all around the world. In fact, if we're not making sure that the nations of the world know Christ, we're not being uh, obedient as followers of Jesus Christ. And what we're working toward is a vision that will ultimately be realized in Revelation. In fact, the Apostle John saw that vision as he was on the Isle of Patmos. And we read in Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 and 10, that beautiful picture of what will be coming one day. After this, John says, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. What a wonderful day that's going to be when we all get to gather around the throne of God with people of all kinds of backgrounds in every nation, tribe, and tongue. Well, our strategy for fulfilling the Great Commission and reaching toward that vision found in Revelation for Southern Baptist is the International Mission Board. And through the International Mission Board, we give resources and we send missionaries all around the world. And our ministry has been going on strong for 175 years without interruption. Through all kinds of world things that were going on, disasters and wars and pandemics, the gospel has continued moving forward through the International Mission Board because missions never stops. What an amazing ministry we get to be a part of. And, and our church has been blessed to know a lot of, quote, real live missionaries, as Dan O'Regan calls them, because of our missionary residence where we get to host furloughing missionaries, as well as the fact that we have several retired missionary couples who are members of our church. And all of these folks, whether it's the missionaries who come in and stay with us for a season, or the missionaries who are retired and who are, are invested now in our church, all of these people help keep missions at the forefront of our church's ministry. People like John and Martha Clement, Tom and Judy Kent, Dan and Beverly O'Regan, and Mike and Linda Kennedy have served on the front line of missions as uh, uh, medical missionaries and pastors and church planners and, and regional directors in areas like Indonesia and Paraguay and Japan and Malawi. And we're so grateful for this heritage that we have and we wanna see it continue here at First Baptist Church Pineville. So I want us to take a moment now and pray for our heritage of missions. 
that it will help us to move forward and continue to be about missions as a church family. In fact, here's what I'd like for you to do. If you're watching on Facebook and you have the opportunity to drop a comment there, or you could do the same thing on YouTube if you're working on a computer, I'd like for you to, in the comments, write a prayer thanking God for our heritage of missions and also asking God to help us to continue in missions as a church. And you can do that prayer as I pray for us corporately. Let's go to the Lord in prayer together. Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the way that you have blessed our church in the area of missions. We're thankful for all of the relationships that we have had through all of the decades of ministry. We're grateful for the missionaries we know that are still serving on the front lines of missions all around the world. We're grateful, God, for those who've come home and who are now missionaries right here with us in central Louisiana. We pray, God, that all of this mission heritage would encourage us and fuel us and fan the flame of our fire and desire for missions as a church family. God, our desire is to see the nations worship you. And so, God, we pray that you would help us to be obedient in prayer, obedient in giving, even, God, obedient in going. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for that heritage to fan the flame in our church because though we have a great legacy of mission, mission work in our church and our denomination and millions, if not billions of people, have come to faith in Jesus Christ because of this mission work, the need has never been greater than it is right now. In fact, you can see on the screen the number of unreached people groups in the world, 7,070 unreached people group who represent four and a half billion unreached people living on earth right now. Those people need the gospel because that means 154,937 people are dying daily without Christ. We're all concerned about the coronavirus and the number of people who've died by that. And the whole world is being uh, focused on bringing an end to that virus. My goodness, more people die every day without Christ than will die, uh, than will die in, a, in a, a couple of years because of this coronavirus. We need to be as intentional and intensive about sharing the gospel around the world and in our own area as we are about protecting and finding a cure to this virus. We want to be about that. And there is so much need in the world. And I've asked one of our retired missionaries and a retired state missions leader, Mike Kennedy, to lead us in a prayer, asking the Lord to help us to reach the people that have this need for the gospel. May we pray. Our Father, we do thank you for the call that you've placed upon our lives to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. For we know, Lord, that there are many, many people who have not heard the gospel. As we have learned that there are over 7,000 unreached people groups across the world. On every continent, there are groups who've never heard the gospel. And we thank you, Father, that that calling upon our lives has been real, has been definite, and has been specific. And that is to go to a lost world and take the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We thank you that we are part of a church and part of Southern Baptist denomination that holds missions in such high esteem that it is our focus, it's our heart's desire to take the gospel to the world. We do thank you, Father, for our pastor, for our church. We thank you for those who have committed themselves to going to the lost of the world. We pray that you would give us strength that we might support them as they travel the paths of all continents, Lord to take the gospel to the unreached. And what a privilege it is to experience that call and be part of it, both in going and in supporting. For we know, Father, that your blessings will be upon those who go. So we do thank you for the missionaries that are serving on the field today. We ask you to encourage them, give them strength, 
Help them proclaim the gospel with clarity that over four billion people might come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. While the need is very great, the potential for us to fulfill the Great Commission has never been stronger than ever. I want you to think about this for a moment. There are around 47,500 SBC churches, or churches that cooperate with the Southern Baptist Convention. Those churches report 14,500,000 members. If just 25% of Southern Baptist churches, or if Southern, if 25% of Southern Baptist gave a hundred dollars to this year's Lottie Moon Christmas offering, we would raise 400 million dollars. That's just 25 percent of Southern Baptists giving a hundred dollars. The goal is only 175 million. There is no reason that Southern Baptists around the world could not reach this goal and there's no reason why our church could not exceed our goal of twenty five thousand dollars. Because if all of us gave, as we could challenge all Southern Baptists to give, we would raise far more than $25,000. We want to do our part. And so I'd encourage you to prayerfully consider what your family will give. Uh, probably no one in our church today, right now, knows the need for giving and supporting missions than Miss Janie Wise, who works over at the Baptist Building and helps lead our women's and missions ministries there. And I've asked her to share a little bit and then also pray that our people would give like never before. We Southern Baptists have been involved in, in international missions for 175 years, as Brother Stewart just said. And with the first sending of those first missionaries, we realized that along with that was a responsibility to support and make it possible for them to serve without continually fundraising. And so uh, we, we give to make that happen. Lottie Moon, for whom our international offering was learned, named for, was one of those early missionaries, and she was an earnest letter writer. And she would write letters to the board imploring them to send more help. She wrote letters to churches and to women's leaders and said, please give so that more can come. As earnest as her letters were then, think how well they need to be today and what letters she would write today. Her letters would be even more appropriate today as they were. And so we ask, as you seek God's guidance into how you would give this year, think of this as a cooperative effort. We give so others can go. We pray so others can serve. Will you pray with me? We pause, Lord, to be grateful for those who have, have served and who are now serving. We recognize that you called them to something no, no greater than you call us to serve you with all our lives. But you moved them. You took them away from home. You took them away from the comforts and the, the closeness of family and put them where you need them. So, Lord, because of that, we recognize that the, the need for our prayers. And, Lord, we pray that for our missionaries today that they would be able to keep their focus on the mission at hand. Given the world we live in with all the, the interruptions we've had this year with COVID, with the pandemic, uh, with the, the changes in the political atmosphere, Lord, with all those things that have crowded in on our lives, God, we'd ask that you would keep our missionaries focused on the mission that all might hear. Lord, we'd ask for you to guide their health Keep them healthy so that they could serve in their, during these days so that they recognize that the challenge, and we recognize, Lord, the challenge that pandemic has presented to our missionaries serving, those who have come home, those who cannot go back yet as planned, those who are just waiting to go in the first place until a field opens up. Lord, we'd ask then that you would make us responsible for giving. Help us to accept cheerfully that responsibility to give and to give financially so that our missionaries can serve. Guide our thoughts as we ask, how do you want us to give? Help us to see the end result. Help us to see how it can be used. Lord, guide us to give so that new missionaries can go, fulfilling your call on their lives. Lord, use our gifts to touch the lost, the lonely, the refugee, the farmer, 
the service man, the teacher, the ones who don't know you because they've never yet heard because of where they live. God, use our gifts to make possible the furtherance of your giving, of your, of your call. In your name we pray. Amen. The key to all of this is together. We have to gather to see the gospel go forward. Some people can give $100, some people can't. Some people can give far more. But when all of those resources come together, it becomes a mighty wave of support that helps missionaries do what they're called to do. One of the amazing, several amazing things take place when our gifts come together. We get to see faster deployment take place. We get well-trained missionaries on the field faster when the resources are there to help them do so. We also get to reach out to remote areas. One of the interesting things is that our resources and our reputation as Southern Baptists and the International Mission Board allow us to get into remote areas to reach those unreached people groups that are so plentiful around the world. We also get to have a sustained presence. The Lottie Moon Christmas offering allows our missionaries to stay on the field. They don't have to come home and raise support and then go back. We send them the support. When they get to come home, they get to rest and be able to share what God's doing, which then only helps us want to support them even more. And then we get to also give member care to our missionaries. We're able to provide support and, and mental health care for the missionaries on the front lines, and there's so much need for that as they're away from home, and some of them are in very challenging areas, especially right now with the coronavirus pandemic going on. And you know what's interesting? All of that has been happening and is happening. In fact, take a look at these numbers from 2019 and what God did through our work through the International Mission Board. We saw 827 people groups engaged by the IMB. We uh, were able to have 535,000 people hear the gospel message. 47,900 of those were baptized. Uh, 12,368 new churches were started. 33,000 men and pastors received advanced theological training and 214 groups with self-sustaining ownership had in the mission work. That's incredible work and that's the kind of thing that we get to be a part of as a church family. We want to give thanks for the impact that our work through the International Mission Board is having and I've asked one of our retired International Mission Board members, Ms. Linda Kennedy, to offer that prayer. Let's pray. Father, as we hear the report that Stuart just made about the great strides that happened last year, we just give you praise. Your work didn't stop. Just because things were different for us and unsettling for us, your word still went forward. Men and women, boys and girls heard the story of the gospel and we thank you for that, Father. We thank you that you are a sending God. We thank you that you are a God who calls us out, who calls men and women to leave the comfort of their home and take the gospel all around the world. And Father, I know they do that with a joyful heart. They do that uh, out of a desire to follow that call that's been placed in their life. Father, it is a wonderful thing to be able to do that, to depend on you and to see you at work. And we just thank you, Father, for all the missionaries that have gone before us for so many years, 175 years of our Southern Baptist work, Father, all those men and women who have gone before, we thank you. We thank you for the work that they did. And Father, even today, we know that we've had 76 men and women who were just recently appointed last month that are eagerly awaiting to leave and to go to the field, to take their children and to take their life and, and spend it for you. They're not doing it begrudgingly. And Father, what does that say to us when you ask us to be a part of that you don't call or gift everyone to go, but you do call all of us to be on mission. As Stuart read the Great Commission as we started, 
We can't get past that word go. That was for everyone, go. Well, how can we do that if we can't go ourselves? We go when we join together. We go when we pray, when we support. Yes, the Foreign Mission Board sends out, but it's the churches, the people in the pew that support that going. And so, Father, help us, each one, as we come to this time of special offering for our foreign missionaries, that we see it as an opportunity that we, too, can have a part in that going, that we are going when we give our gifts and when we enable them to go in our place, to take the gospel to people who have not heard, where the gospel is inaccessible, there's so many that are just waiting to hear, Father. I'm thankful that we are part of a church who has mission education from the youngest all the way up to the oldest. And it's not just to learn about missionaries or to do a special missions project, but to lead us and guide us to live a life that is on mission. We should always be on mission and Father, I, we realize more and more each day that the world has come to us. It's right here. Help us, Father, to see the world that needs to know you. Thank you for the opportunity of serving you. Thank you for all the blessings that you've given us. Just hard to find the words, Father, at this time that we are getting ready to celebrate your birth to express how much we know that you love us and we depend on you every day for everything that we have. We know that every good and perfect gift comes from you. Father, help us to be willing to share that gift. It's in Christ's precious name that I pray. Amen. Lottie Moon, our Southern Baptist hero of international missions, said this, Why should we not do something that will prove that we are really in earnest in claiming to be followers of him who, though he was rich, for our sake became poor? We must do something. And for most of us, that something is twofold. Pray and give. Prayer is the most important and the most effective thing that you can do. In fact, I've never met a missionary that didn't answer the question, what do you need, with the answer, prayer. They've always said that. They don't talk about money, though they need money. They don't talk about uh, sending resources, though they need resources. They talk about prayer because they know when we pray, God will provide everything that they need. And so I encourage you to take this week especially to pray for international missions and our missionaries all over the world. You may know some personally that you can pray for by name, and I've always encouraged that one of our retired missionaries, Martha Clement, says the prayer of God bless the missionaries works too because God knows exactly who they are, where they are, and what they need. God will answer our prayers. Look for your emails and on our social media post each day, we're sharing a video, a prayer prompter that will help you spend a few moments in prayer for our missionaries this week during the week of prayer for international missions and the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. But we also do encourage you to give as well. As I've said, our church goal is $25,000, and we want you to give generously this year. You can do that online, of course, through going to fbcpineville.net forward slash connect, or you could bring that on December 13th when we gather again for our white Christmas in gathering. Just bring that offering for Lottie Moon in an envelope, and we're going to bring it into the sanctuary and cover the steps with our envelopes as well as the gifts for the Main Street Mission Angel Tree, and we just kind of have our own white Christmas right here in Louisiana each year on that day. And so I hope that you can participate in that. If you can't give online or bring it on December 13th, you can, of course, always mail that in or bring it by the church office next week when the church office opens back up. God is doing so many things in our church. He's doing so many things in our world, and we want to make sure that we help all of that take place. May you go to the Lord with me again in prayer and seek him and ask him to bless our efforts this year. Father God, this is a very strange year. Just when we think things are getting back to normal, then they're back not to normal. 
And so, God, in all of the pivoting and shifting that we've done, it's reminded us once again that we have to rely upon you. We have to seek you. One thing also that this crazy year has reminded us of is that people desperately need Jesus Christ. Lord, here in central Louisiana, in Louisiana, in North America, and even around the world. And so, God, we pray that you would help us to make sure people find out about the Lord. God, we pray that you give us opportunity to share in our own lives. We pray that you would help us to harness the power of social media and all the different technologies that we have today to get the word out. And then, Lord, also we pray that you would bless us so that we can give and we can bless others with the ability to go and to share and to invest their lives in ministry. God, we're so grateful for those who answer the call to go. And we're so grateful, God, for the International Mission Board that gives them the support and the mechanism in which to go. And God, one more prayer that I would offer. I'd pray, God, that you would raise up missionaries in our church again. Lord, that there would be boys and girls, teenagers, who would respond to the call of missions in their lives. Lord, we don't know what that might look like in this day and time, but Lord, there's got to be some kids that you're calling to mission work. And so, God, I pray that you'd raise those up as we go into the years ahead. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers tonight. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope that you will continue to join us in prayer that all of the nations would worship the Lord. Focus now on this good report from Paul Chitwood, the president of the International Mission Board. On behalf of the International Mission Board, I want to thank you, Southern Baptists, for 175 years of working together to get the gospel to the nations. Thank you for providing for nearly 3,700 IMB missionaries through your cooperative program and Lottie Moon Christmas offering gifts. Your faithful financial support and unwavering prayer support are the lifelines for Southern Baptist International Missions. Throughout our 175-year history, Southern Baptists have maintained an uninterrupted witness among the nations in spite of famines, wars, civil unrest, and even as we have experienced this year, pandemics. This commitment has not come without sacrifice by your missionaries, and their continued witness cannot continue without your sacrificial support. Last year, Southern Baptists gave over $157 million to support international missionaries in the third highest Lottie Moon offering ever received. IMB also received just over $99 million through the cooperative program, and that's the third consecutive year that CP giving top $99 million for IMB receipts. In recent weeks, we've heard new reports of how your Southern Baptist missionaries continue to be a part of God's work on the international mission field where more than half a million people heard a gospel witness last year, resulting in nearly 90,000 new believers. In Central Asia, IMB teams created gospel witness videos for 99 different languages that were shown through social media. Production has begun on gospel videos for the last 11 languages of Central Asia, which have no Bible tools of any kind. Believing Southeast Asians have set up a studio for scripture translation, and the local deaf church is working with IMB colleagues to evangelize, plant churches, and work on Bible translations with other new believers and complete Bible stories in all the neighboring countries of Southeast Asia. In North Africa and the Middle East, evangelism has happened in clinics, in gyms, living rooms, coffee shops, barber shops, parks, and classrooms all places where your Christian workers normally interact with people in their communities on a daily basis. In South Asia, small congregations dedicated 30 minutes a day for 30 days to talk to people intentionally about Jesus. Over the course of one month, these faithful individuals shared with more than 7,000 people. The Lord has worked mightily among an animus people group in the mountains of East Asia, the church has grown, and there are hundreds of believers among this group in a remote village. Now the church is working to send out missionaries to reach other unreached groups with the gospel. Has everyone heard? No, everyone has not yet heard. We know that every second, two people die without knowing Christ. We know that 25% of spoken languages do not have scripture to share the gospel in their heart languages. And that is why Southern Baptist, your IMB is still sending your missionaries. And these faithful workers are still sharing the gospel wherever the Lord places them. Uh, whether in a temporary location due to COVID-19 or through new digital channels during a lockdown. 
Praise God, the gospel is advancing. And you're a part of this eternal work through your giving, your praying, your sending, and your going. Every church, regardless of its size or resources, has a part to play in reaching every nation with the gospel. And the nations are waiting. Thank you for doing your part. in this prayer together. Our heart, our desire is to see the nations worship. Our cry, our prayer is to sing your praise to the end of the earth that with one mighty voice every tribe and tongue rejoices our heart our desire is to see the nations worship is to see the nations worship you.